You're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com, and it's me, it's me, it's that busy to the jizzy, the D-O-double jizzy, B.G. James. Listen, get it, got it, good. On the phone today, we have um, former NWA World Heavyweight Champion and a member of the Three Live Crew. You can see him in the upcoming TNA pay-per-view. We have Ron, The Truth, Killings. Welcome to In Your Head. What's going on? Not much, man. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. And yourself? I'm doing good, man. Cool, cool. This weekend, we have the TNA Sacrifice pay-per-view, which you can find more information at TNAWrestling.com. And um, on that card, you're going to be teaming with Conan versus Kip James and the alpha, alpha male, Monty Brown. Special referee BG James. So, what do you think about this match? Yeah, that's gonna be a doozy, right? That's gonna be a doozy, right? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, well, I'm looking to see. Where, I'm looking to see where BG James here is gonna be at. Yeah, you think this will be the end of the three live crew? Or are you guys gonna get back together? Um, you know, man, it's real shaky right now. Um, it's what I mean. Cause I talk to these guys, man, on camera, off camera. So I don't know. I'm hoping that we can continue the three live crew, but. I think I had to find out into the paper for uh, Sunday night. Right. When you guys started the three live uh, crew gimmick, I knew you and uh, BG were friends from WWE, right? Yes. Um, what about Conan? Yes, yes. I, uh, um, Conan and I started a tag team before BG James got there at uh, TNA. Uh, that was um, he and our first time meeting. Right. But um, he still, you know, I, I, I can say we all got some type of history together. Okay. What do you think of uh, Conan's shoe spot? I love it. I um, <laughs> I was with him in Puerto Rico and I saw him do it, and I thought it was the greatest thing in the world when he done it. I told him to do it in the states. <laughs> Did you expect it to get over? Oh yeah, definitely. It's a big disrespect, and yeah, you know, we all go on the respect factor here. So um, I think a lot of people felt the uh, thought of disrespect within the shoe. Right. I see some of the crowd, um, when he comes out, they'll hold up their shoes, and they'll even chant shoe. That's one of the funny thing about the shoe spot. The whole crowd them got into it, and now it's like, um, I'm trying to find some way to incorporate the shoe into our merchandise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Need to sell some foam shoes. <laughs> Everybody holds up the fo foam shoe. <laughs> you don't want Conan to get too popular, though, or get the Tom Jones effect, where they start throwing the shoes at him. <laughs> When you guys started the three live crew thing, uh, how'd you like doing the uh, vignettes? I love doing the vignettes. I think that's one of the things that got three live crew over. We done a lot of vignettes before we got in the ring. They're pretty. They were all funny stuff. Everything um, we was funny, man. Um, yeah. Which did you like better, uh, back in the Nashville crowd or the Orlando one? Nashville. Like the Nashville one. Uh, the, the Orlando crowd was very good when we first got there. I think um, you know you got there's a bunch of tourists in uh, Orlando. Right. So which tours make good crowds too because a lot of people, you know, they, they appreciate the sport more once they see it in person if they're close. But in Nashville, you have a lot of fans that's dedicated wrestling fans. Right, they come there every week. They, uh, every week, dedicated. All the guys in Orlando, they just um, they happen to be there and decide to go. It's like part of a show. It's it, part well, of the uh, yes, and, yes, you're right. Yes, you got a lot of people there, but there's also a lot of people that come there every week too, just like in Nashville. But right, I think Nashville just. You know, you just got these that hard, dedicated wrestling fans. Well, maybe once you guys get on TV again, um, we'll start building up a, uh, a stronger um, fan base that will show up there every week. So what do you think about yeah, the new definitely. Spike deal? Are you guys excited about that? Um, very excited, man. I think it would be a great opportunity for TNA. You know, that's only thing that was missing is, is a, a market to show, you know what I'm saying, to show what we got there. And uh, now that be given that chance, there's no way for TNA to go butt up. That's going to be on Saturdays? Uh, Saturday's live taping. I think we do a taping on Sunday. In the beginning with TNA, everybody on the internet pretty much started predicting that they'd go out of business from the moment they started. And you seem to have proved them wrong so far. And you've got yourself a nice TV deal. Well, I mean, in the beginning, nobody thought TNA would last a year. Uh, as a matter of fact, we've, uh, Vince McMahon and Senate have even tried to, like, you know, do shifty things to stop TNA, uh, we uh, ran into a couple of problems as far as uh, being able to use the fairgrounds. First, we were at the auditorium. Then we had to go to the fairgrounds, man, but everybody kept, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Kept stumping, man, and stepping, and now you see where we're at. Right. Do you uh, read a lot of the Internet uh, sites or the uh, wrestling sheets, like The Observer, Figure Four Weekly? Excuse me? 
Do you read the internet sites like uh, pro? Oh no. yes, yes. Yeah. So what was it like always reading that though? That they were always, I still up till uh, pretty much now. They keep uh, saying that TNA is about over. You guys just keep going. Oh, that's oh, that's what one of the sites say. <laughs> yeah, that's what a lot of the sites say, and a lot of the uh, sheets like the uh, Observer. Oh, they say that TNA is over. No, that they've always been saying that since it started. That it was about over. Oh, well, they can kiss our ass now. You guys gonna do any more songs? The three live crew songs? Three live. Okay, I, I don't understand what you asked me. Oh, do you have any plans of doing any more songs with the three live crew? Oh yeah, ring music, yes, definitely. Uh, we, we also talked about doing some out of wrestling music as well. Hmm. How did you get along with uh, Vince Russo when you guys started? I like Vince Russo. I love Vince Russo. I think he's one of the smartest man in the business. Smartest writers. Yeah. You think they uh, should have kept him around? In TNA, you think they were better off with yeah. Vince Russo? Um, I wouldn't say we should have kept around. I think uh, I think he'd be a great asset to have now. Right. Yeah. You know, Vince. Uh, you know, he kind of left a lot on his own. I think he wanted to. He. Um, but if he wants to be here, I think he'd be here. I think um, it'd be a good asset for to have him. Yeah. Was he behind the change from K Crush to the Truth? Yes, sir. Ah. Uh, he was behind that, uh, Jerry, Jared, and Jeff as well. Okay, because that's really when you started to develop a character and the fans started to get behind you. Yes, and I, mean, and I was grateful for that time. I, um, I didn't understand why, but I went with it. I mean, the name change was great for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were the guys in TNA surprised just at how charismatic you were on the mic since you didn't get a lot of time to talk in the WWE? Yes. Um, some of the guys were, uh, but guys that like AJ Styles and guys that I, you know, before television I used to work mm -hmm. with, a lot of people knew that I could talk on the mic, but guys like um, Road Dog and Ace Parker guys seeing me being able to uh, get used like that, they were shocked and uh, they think I should have a lot more uh, mic time. Were you a fan of wrestling growing up before you got into it? Um, sort of, kind of. I was a fan until I, uh, until my teenage years. I right. think after my teenage years I kind of like faded out. Uh, what wrestling did you watch uh, growing up? Oh, I was a big mark for the Road Warriors. <laughs> ah, cool. <laughs> Road Warriors, Ric Flair, Magnum PA, all of oh, so, that. So like uh, NWA? Yes. Yeah. So it must have been a, a big thing for you to win the NWA title, since that was the uh, promotion you watched. Uh, I think mean, that was a great honor, man. Big privilege. Uh, that was the number one opportunity in my life, man, that I took advantage of. Right. I mean, you can just barely express how much, you know, it's going to be Ken Shamrock for one, for two to be the first African-American even hold the belt. Um, would you like to get back into the title hunt, or would you like to stick with uh, tag teams? Um, well, you know, I'm a Suntan Superman. It doesn't matter, really. I'll do the title <laughs> hunt. Well, I'll do the tag thing. It doesn't matter. All right. Well, I think once you guys get on TV, you, you need to have uh, more mic time again. More tag time? Uh, I'm, I'm hoping so. Microphone time. Oh, more mic time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, they, they, it's good talk about them uh, giving me a lot of my time once we get the spike deal. Well, we already got it, but once we're on TV, and I've seen a lot of truth on that. Yeah, that was one of the highlights of uh, the weekly shows were uh, some of your promos, I thought. Oh, thank you, man. That was good stuff. Uh, who used to do your uh, your shirts? You used to wear the um, airbrushed uh, T-shirts. I'm glad you said that. Uh, that was an idea of mine, man. A guy in uh, Charlotte, he does airbrushing. He would uh, get my magazine pictures and just airbrush me different shirts. His name is a kilo. He's, uh, he lives in Charlotte, Carolina. Cool. Hmm. Think about uh, wearing those again sometime? You know what? I brought one back from Charlotte this weekend. And, oh. Uh, I'm, I'm very well thinking about taking my character back to, to the airbrush scene again. Cool. Maybe we'll see that at the pay-per-view. <laughs> yes, definitely. Were, um, when they first came to you about changing the name to uh, Ron the Truth Killings, were you all right with it? Yes, I was definitely all right with it. Um, it was explained to me uh, and, and brought to my attention that nobody can copyright your birth given name. They want to kill is my real name. Oh, okay. So you just throw, yeah, you just throw the truth in there and it's, it adds up. I like it. Mm -hmm. Cool. I was sold real quick on that. I remember those, um, when you wrestled for XPW, they were calling you K. Malik Shabazz. What was up with that? Man, I hated that shit. Excuse me, my <laughs> friends. I hated that thing. And I told them, I, didn't, I, I, I was totally against it. And that was one of the reasons why I didn't want to go back to XPW. 
She didn't like working for Rob and, Black. And it was all, well, it was, I, mean, I had a problem working for Rob Black, other than Rob Black paid me late. I didn't like that late right. at night. Hmm. But um, other than that, man, it was just a problem with the name thing. And I, and I later realized, you know, everybody wants to give you a name that they can say they gave you for currency reasons, just for getting money off of it, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Like when you went to WWE, they changed it to uh, K-Quick. Yes. And that was for Vince to own. When, um, you know, people know they, they know you by the names you get you bear. Mm -hmm. I mean, would you rather have me as for, uh, formerly known as K-Quick, K-Quick, that people have seen me for my career come up in, or just throw me out there like K-Malik Shabazz shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I remember I watched some of those shows, and they would, like, uh, the commentators would, like, pronounce it differently every time. Every time? I couldn't even pronounce the name. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I would never use it in, in interviews that like I could pronounce it. And, um, I had talked to one of the guys that was talking to Rob Black, and I told him, I said, well, if they don't want to call me, or can't call me another name, you know, she has to come back. No, when um, I read that you were trained by Manny Fernandez. Is that the Raging Cole? Yes. Uh -huh. What was he like? Is he a good guy? Uh, he's an awesome guy. I, mean, I think he's one of the greatest guys I want to meet. Um, any and everybody got a bad side. And a lot of people, fortunately, saw his bad side more than I did, but... Um, he was a hell of a guy, man. He taught me, um, you know, aware, awareness in the ring, psychology. He taught me how to use what I got at the right time. Yeah. What advice would you give uh, someone trying to get into the business now? Where do you think a good place for them to train would be? First of all, if they want to get into the business, I would advise them to make sure this is what they really want to do. Right. And they're going to hit stumbling blocks. They're going to hit walls. They're going to hit everything. But as long as they keep it dedicated to their heart and keep pursuing it, it happens. So um, after you were trained by him, did you go right to Memphis? No, uh, after I was trained by Manny, uh, I ended up at the W Wild Side. Oh, okay. Did you uh, wrestle AJ Styles there? Because I know he was there for a long time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, AJ, uh, we, we would tear it up like at least every two or three weeks there. Cool. So you've known him for a long time then? Oh, yeah, I've been on AJ way before my uh, TV career. What was it like when you went to Memphis? Was that under a uh, WWE developmental deal? Yes. Um, it was, um, actually, man, it was just an eye-opener of everything I went through and everything I, you know, gave blood, sweat, and tears for. It was actually coming to the light now. Now I can see it. So it was just um, an, another experience for me that I needed to go through, and I learned a lot going to Memphis. I learned, as a matter of fact, I think I learned the ass end of my learning experience that I need to sum up in Memphis. I learned a whole new aspect and way of handling life and the celebrity thing and it all it all summed up in Memphis. Yeah. Who were the, some of the trainers in Memphis at the time? Or some of the guys you learned stuff uh, we from? Had Jim Nightheart was there, uh, Steve Rigo, Percy Smothers. I think that was about it. They was they were sending the more people down but I stayed there, I think it was like a year a little over a year, and that's when I went to TV. So, um, when you went to WWE, did you get any uh, a lot of ribbing from the uh, veterans that were there? A lot of what now? Ribbing? Ribs or um, yeah, or hazing? Oh, no. you know, actually, I, actually, I didn't because um, Road Dog saw me uh, do a show in Memphis, and when he saw me, he immediately told him that he wanted me to be his tag partner. And when I came in, everybody, I mean, like Triple H was the first person to tell me, you know, here's the catering room and. There's a locker room, and everybody looked at me as that's Road Dogg's buddy. So I, I bypassed and skipped all the ribs, man, fortunately to that, but no, I, I never good. got ribbed about anything. Yeah, I, I gave me lucky. Um, did you um, show respect to everybody? That might have helped as well, I guess. Oh, yeah, definitely. I always show respect. Always. Yeah. Were you surprised when they let you go so quick? Yeah, I was surprised and pissed. Yeah. You know, um, the excuse they gave me was that they couldn't find them for me to do, you know? Yeah. It's an excuse that goes around to a lot of guys nowadays. Yeah, that's pretty much the excuse I gave to all the guys that let go recently. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I talked to uh, Devon, and Devon told me that, um, you know, the way they're releasing guys now, my release was a barbecue, so you can imagine how it is up there. <laughs> yeah. Um, now you want to put it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what, what do you think about, um, you think you, TNA should bring in a lot of those guys that they recently let go? Like uh, Dudley Boys, Charlie Haas. Um, yeah, I think, I think a lot of those guys we could use. A lot of yeah. them could use. I'm quite, you, you know, they can't bring in everybody because there's right. a guy in TNA that's been busting ass and, and, and sticking it in there that deserves that, you know, an opportunity that's going to come now. 
Right. right. So I think a lot of those guys we could use, you know. You feel a lot proud being with TNA since you you've been there since the start. Now they're on pay per view, and they've got the upcoming uh, TV deal. Man, actually, that that is, that is a great feeling, and a lot of people ask me how I feel. And being that I know I was one of the ones that start, helped start that company off, man, that's a great feeling to still be there. And they look at me as like you know one of the ones that started. It's a great feeling. Yeah, I'm very proud of that. When WWE let you go, did you think about just uh, leaving the business? Oh yeah, definitely. I thought about yeah. leaving the business and just pursuing my music. Um, you know, I think I'm human like everybody else. You, know, you start doubting yourself, doubting whether you was even uh, made, built, ready for this business, or, or did you deserve to be in it? Could you give anything? And you know, after going through all of that, man, you, you get a reality check and you shift your ass in high gear and you go ahead again. Is there any place we could uh, find your music? You have an, a site? Uh, I'm in the process of getting a site. Y'all got my cell number. If you guys call me back or, or get to the TNA within like a month's time, the, the, the Snoop City, City will be ready. Oh, excellent. Uh, <laughs> we have a, a fan. Ready. Cool. We have a fan of our show, and um, he's actually doing um, us a, a rap song. His name's Duckman. He's an independent rapper. And he wanted to be on today. Uh, he wanted to uh, do some freestyle with you, but he couldn't get off work. <laughs> but oh, he did man, ask me. Oh, should... Yeah. But um, he did ask me if you could uh, give him a little... Uh, if you could give him a sample of one of your songs or do a little freestyle for him. Oh, one of my songs? Yeah. If you could sing a little bit of it on the, song, on the show. Okay, let me see. Let me think which one I would give him. Uh, can y'all hear me good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me see. Um, y'all call me off guard now, man. I love <laughs> That's all right. We I'll tell everybody it. that they can go to uh, the thecafeparadiso.com. <laughs> they can buy Duck Man CDs there. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, cool, 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 cool. Right. Um, go ahead. We love pe putting people on the Okay, spot. what's the name of your show? What's the name of your show? In your head. In your head. In your head? Yes, yep. sir. Okay, to describe my rhyme, the verb is blended. The now was in your head and the adjective is blended. I'm on the mic, your body was filled with hype. The educated MC, the intellectual type. I'm the hip-hop king, the predator of rap. So no doubt, I'm the best of buddy, give me some doubt. I don't care if you're skinny or built for a chub. My rhymes are obligated, they make you feel like a scrub. Because I battle anybody with top choice grammar. Set you up, beat you down like a 20-ton hammer. For all the biting MCs that have tried to bite my rhymes, how many have died. If you try to battle me, you will get fried. As you trying to hear my tape, my body's probably to get tongue-tied. I'm not trying to criticize. Don't be misled. You can't kill the noise because it's already dead. For time is getting short, so I got to break. Can't be everlasting. My controller, my creator's rap champ. Oh, excellent. Oh, that's good for you. Oh, that was great. Yeah, we'll excellent. have to keep that on. the man on the <laughs> new head. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to get you on again sometime, too, and have Duckman give you some uh, freestyle with you. <laughs> hey, let's do that, dog. Y'all got my number. Call anytime. time. Give me on here. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Excellent. Um, I just want to know, um, what do you think about Scott Demore taking over as a uh, booker? Yeah. I think it's great. I love Scott. Uh, a lot of changes are being made. Plus, Scott likes three live crew, so and we've yeah. always liked him. We've always had good chemistry. And Scott, believe it or not, whether people know it or not, he's got very a big brain, smart for the business. Cool. Um, did you get along with Dusty when he was booking? Dusty Rhodes? Yeah, but... I think that's just full of shit to me. Yeah. <laughs> you think uh, TNA needs a younger mind? Like I mean, yes, yeah, definitely. A younger mind, or more of a mind that can uh, adapt with time and change and, and give it the program. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, Dusty Rhodes exactly. doesn't spend the time to do that. Yeah. He, Dusty Rhodes yeah, doesn't spend the time to do that. He's a bad time warp man. And, um, you know, he was cool with everybody once, you know, before it started, but once he got his stroke, nice. man, he just. He came, I guess, his own him. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And Dusty Rhodes doesn't exactly seem the type who can get into the hip hop scene and really understand the three life crew. <laughs> exactly. He's not going to understand nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> I would have liked to see him. Come that. on, look. Our, our, he had our office, uh, the office of our company with the back of a pickup truck with hay. How hip is that? <laughs> I don't know. I would have the tractor and the deers and the horses and the cow too. That just screams hip hop. <laughs> yeah, all, all over. Just throw hay up in the air. Hip hop, hey. 
I don't know. I would have liked to hear Dusty Rhodes on a three live crew track, you know, <laughs> rapping about his belly welly on top of <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, what would he go say? Let me say something like he ain't folks. <laughs> wow. yeah, something like a monkey in public, if you will. Yeah, is that? <laughs> and monkeys ain't even sparking. <laughs> <laughs> he could have broke out the old uh, black uh, and yellow uh, polka dot suit. Yeah, that would have been a blast from the past, huh? <laughs> oh, that would have been good. <laughs> Get any uh, good uh, rib stories from uh, TNA or road stories? That you um, can share with us? We don't want to have rib stories, man. We just uh, we have a ball in the locker room, man. It's like... No stress, stress free, man. You can put your hair down, and I just love it the locker room, man. Everybody just gets along there. Yeah. So it's not. Um, how would you compare that locker room to uh, the WWE locker room? Night and day. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Night and day. Uh, I can clean them. <laughs> From Laverne and Shirley, uh, Milo and Ola is just totally different. <laughs> A lot less pressure. Less pressure, man. Um, less uh, eyes all on you, on your back, uh, up your ass, behind your head, under your armpits. <laughs> um, you you allow you you able you can go to the bathroom by yourself. Uh, <laughs> don't glass of water. I mean, I'm being funny, but I mean it's just like totally, man. It is stress free there. I never knew how much that mattered, man. You know what I'm saying? You make good money on the road a lot. And you yeah. never look at the small things, simple things, so, you know what I'm saying, you get the right time to. Right. Did you ever feel any sort of pressure when you came right into TNA and they seemed to put so much stock in you right from the beginning? Um, I, I did feel pressure, but I was like, I was like a sponge, man. I was ready to soak it up and take it and, mm. and run with it. I mean, right then we needed, I knew what was going to happen, what, what, what was up and I was just ready to go ahead and do it. Did you um did you do a lot of promos before you went to WWE? Because you really didn't do any in WWE. I um I did promos, you know, when you they have you rehearsing and you get the back. They have you rehearsing, you know, and uh doing props. But WWE knew I, I could do promos, man, from you know, then watching my indie tapes. They knew I could do promos. They just never gave me an opportunity to do it. That's yeah. one reason why, you know, I'm I stuck in with TNA and I'm grateful for it because they gave me that opportunity to do that. Whether nobody else could or not, they saw enough in me to give me an opportunity to do it. And I was with Vince for two years, and he didn't do it. No. Yeah, I think everybody was really surprised when you came to TNA, and you were such a good uh, promo guy. You showed so much grace. Yes. Thank you, man. Yes, I was just ready to do it. Um, before we let you go, cause you got about a half hour here. Anything you want to tell your fans? Um, tell them uh, real soon there will be a round two um, Max EP being released within a month or two. Cool. Oh, we got a couple questions here from uh, the message board, too, if you don't mind asking, uh, answering them. Okay, no problem. All right. You got them, uh, Barbie? I certainly have. Uh, CJ Styles wants to know if you've been given any time frame that we might see you back in the world title run. In the world title run? Um, mm -hmm. Probably in the next six months, you might see me back in the title run. Huh. And uh, another fan of ours, Toast Hogan, wants... <laughs> <laughs> That's a good name, right? Hogan, uh, Hogan. Toast Hogan. What did he say? Toast Hogan. Yeah. You know what, I'm going to read this verbatim. He says, Mr. Killings, dude, do you like competing in the X Division, or are you more suited for the heavyweight division, Butter? He said, Mr. Killings, dude. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Killings, dude. Tell him I said... Mr. Host, dude, I like competing in the heavyweight division. <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna do when the truth comes after you? Exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, man. This has been a great interview. Absolutely. I wish you all the luck. Oh, thanks for having me on here, man. Thank you all. All right. We'll call you up again sometime. We'll have you. Uh, we get the Duck Man on. Okay, man. Do that. All right. All right. Nice talking to you. You too. Okay. Bye. This is Rachel Bull, man, Fernandez, and you're listening in your head. And if you guys want to know true stories about wrestling and great individuals you want to talk to and find out more about some of the old legends of wrestling, stay tuned for this. <laughs>